Hey everybody, Andrew Douglas here. Sorry it's been a while since we've done a vlog. Um, if you've been hanging out on Facebook at all, you'll see that I released a pretty intensive video about the 13 steps to producing a great bagpipe sound on Facebook. <laughs> T uh, check out Piper's Dojo on Facebook for that. It's also now up on the YouTube channel as well. Uh, but that took a while, but I really wanted to do that. It was something that was sort of on my mind for a long time. And uh, I'm totally stoked with how it came out. And as you'll see, as far as bagpipe videos go, it's gone kind of viral, which is really neat. This past Tuesday, I had a great opportunity. I drove out to see Donald Lindsay, who is a very longtime friend and mentor of mine. Uh, and we added two new P rocks to the two that I was thinking about doing, which I'm going to have to learn, but I'm totally excited about it. And what we're going to do uh, over the next vlog or two is give you some highlights. So we're going to start with McDougal's gathering today. And I just want to sort of take you inside of our lesson a little bit. And I hope you enjoy. Even if you don't love P rock, see if you can kind of like just relax, listen to what's going on, and you'll, you might start to see some of the appeal of this great music. So we'll start with McDougal's gathering here today. It's a gathering tune, so. Exactly, exactly. Not too like, yeah. And then, so as far as the phrases go, yeah. like giant two bar phrases or like? Uh, well, let's see. First off, those four echoes, after much deliberation, they're just all equal. There's no coloration. It, that's why they would say a call to the north, south, east, and west. And let's take it one step further back. In the oldest manuscripts, this is a nameless tune. It appears that somebody right. tagged the name McDougal Gathering onto it. But it suits the tune because it, 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 For sure. it lends itself to this portrait. Yeah. So first off, with the E echoes, they're square. They're cut. And that's how they should be? Yep. Four square Straight echoes. Straight through. Cool. Yep. Yep. But then the phrasing starts to happen after that. And here's another point. I've been really looking carefully at the long E and the short low G that is used so often in the like, first interpretations. Some people are very, very aggressive and they'll play G, um, oh. And other people use it as a glide rather than a cut. G, I think that's more sublime. I think it's a little so bit. So like it is a passing note, but it's not cut. It's a it's a, it's a, it's shorter by certainly shorter than the E, but it's a it has a different impact on the phrase if it's used as a, in the words of Donald McLeod as a broad passing note. Got it. As opposed, and there may be occasions when the person really wants to be aggressive and really hold the E, really cut the low G a lot. But I think to balance these phrases, that's going to be helpful. So okay. that's the overview. It's going to come down, in my opinion, to strong, medium, medium plus, strong plus, when we get to line two, line three. And it'll be that way pretty much in the variations, I would say. And regarding the size of the phrases, so uh, so something like this. Let me get my pitch off this. Quickly off of the D next? Yes. Okay. But the D is featured here. And then we move on to the same four echoes. Uh, 
check it against beans. Are you, are you looking at beans? Yeah.
was very good. <coughs> so you know that you put the half cadence in the end of line one, as it is. Oh, I totally copy. forgot. That's all right. So on your copy, you know, whatever you make a photocopy, I recommend you just just strike out the keepers. You know. That's very good. I don't think there's much I could say. I felt like in the E echoes, you're now 98 percent of the way there. You, they have to be, in my humble opinion, they've got to be played with passion. That big E, is, it's got to go a little over the top. Just, it, it should be a little longer than anyone thought it was going to be. Yeah. But everything else is great. And everything else, uh, and, and the minute you leave that series of echoes, to me, this, those echoes are a serious communication. A serious communication. And once that's done, then the whole thing starts to move again. And you're doing that. You know, I think your phrasing is good. I think your pace is good. But I can like I have to work it out too. Like, just play it a few times. And, like, oh yeah. Find the spots. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But uh, no, that's that's strong. That's really strong. So you want to do first lines or something or what? Maybe do all of the terror and then just first lines or something. Yeah, this has got the funny bits in it too. So that's what makes it so good. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, are these just are there singlings and doublings or is it just straight through? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Uh, yes, there's a uh, the, yeah, singling and doubling. Yes, there is. There is a singling and doubling. And got he, it, got he, it. he puts the doubling in, in, in subscript underneath the line or something. Um, uh, the difference is that the singling has T, and ha, and the doubling doesn't. Just has a terlo or a crimlo there. All right, let's just go for a while and see what happens. All right. Shaving a little bit off number two there. So go again. And that'll get it a little more. is. That's what these turns are. They are a formal ritual. They're a formal ritual. Totally. So we have formal. 
Then we go back. Okay. See? Let me so try, try it. it again. Make that a formal ritual. It is a formal <laughs> conclusion to a major statement. Okay. I'm just making sure there's no repeats. No one repeats. And the line ends are <laughs> bold, big line ends. <laughs> Try that shading. Try to make it subtle, but try that shading. <laughs> 